just for fun, what does this gray shape look like to you, Pete? No, no right or wrong answer, but just sort of a. There's a lot of pressure, pressure, Scott. I mean, it's like some sort of psychological Rorschach test. Yeah. There is a well, right answer. Right. You're saying there isn't. Yes, I'm oh, purposely misleading. A lot of pressure. I'm going to go with map of the United States. Perfect. I love that. I oh, that guess. thank God. Um, just because it's something we're all roughly familiar with, and it does kind of look like the United States. But um, so if I said this area down here, what's the southernmost region of the United States, sort of in the middle? It's a little bit distorted. But yeah, that, that, that looks like it would be the Texas. Yeah, Texas. So just for fun, we'll call our hearing ability in this region of this hearing domain, we'll call this the Texas effect. We hear better in Texas in terms of frequency, 3 to 6K, we called it. We hear better there than anywhere else because we can hear a lower pressure, right? We can hear yeah, there's like a resonance of the air in our ear canal right around there makes us yep. able to hear really well. 4K. That's where it comes from. Yep. All right. Exactly. And this sort of westernmost state here, what would that be? California. That's right. So this sort of looks like the coastline of California. And the California effect, as we'll call it today, is as I lower the frequency, you notice I have to keep increasing the amplitude to, in order to stay in this gray area. And this is showing us that human beings don't hear very well at low frequency. Very low frequencies, I have to keep increasing the amplitude, boom, it's got to be 80 dB at 20 hertz, where most people can start to hear it. Yeah. Whereas at 200 hertz, I can hear roughly 20 dB, okay? And then you see over here, there's this little dip, sort of reminds us of Florida. And then there's what I call the eastern seaboard, which is sort of this vertical line that just says above some frequency around 20,000 hertz. It doesn't matter how loud you make it. So certain uh, sounds certain when frequency. we can't hear them, like 20 dB at 50 hertz, that's in the Pacific Ocean. Other sounds we can't yep. hear are in the Atlantic Ocean. Some are in the Gulf of Mexico. Got it. Correct. Yep. Brilliant. And then you have the Great Lakes region up here. I'm from Michigan, so I'm a little insulted by. Oh, yeah the representation of Michigan yeah. here, but there is a little little nub there. I'll take that. Perhaps the glaciers melted. Yes. So this is the A weighting curve, and it's what we do to the microphone, or we take a microphone measurement, and we apply this curve, and we see some characteristic effects of this hearing domain shape of the United States in this model. Well, it's a little bit hard to see in this orientation, so I'll flip the United States over and now they look a lot more similar, right? You see this big attenuation. So over here on the A weighting curve, the Y axis is actually attenuation, how much you subtract from the measurement microphone's answer. And so this big sweeping uh, part of the A weighting curve is sort of simulating or trying to emulate the California effect. We don't hear very well at low frequency, so we're gonna subtract a bunch of amplitude. If you look closely here, there's actually an area where the attenuation goes above zero. So all of these numbers are negative, but here's zero. Go over here, boom, there's this region where it actually, a weighting will actually amplify the noise. And this sort of matches up with this Texas region. Okay. So the a weighting curve is a very simple curve. It's been used for a long time where there are building filters out of literal resistors and capacitors and things. And so they had to kind of make it simple, but they wanted it to have these characteristics and they did a pretty good job. Yeah. Okay. I think Florida might have gotten some short shrift, it looks like. Cause, uh, yes, this Florida effect, definitely not in, is, uh, captured, yeah. but pretty good. Hmm. Cal Interesting. As in a lot of our culture, California dominates the hearing effect of the United, of the uh, human being. So they got the California effect, and that's, you know. That, that all the rest didn't matter. Yeah. Okay. I guess this answer is East Coast, West Coast. West Coast wins, as long as you're talking about A-weighting and acoustics. So if we take a closer look, let's work with this A-weighted filter in a quick, easy example here. So we go out and we measure with a microphone, and we measure a 100 hertz sine wave, and we measure 70 dB, okay? A weighting curve says go up to 100 hertz and subtract 20 decibels from whatever you got. Okay, so we measured 70 dB with our microphone. We A weight that, 
A weighting tells us to subtract 20 decibels. And so DBA value, we would report 50 decibels instead of 70. So that's okay. always the convention to uh, say A, DBA, when it's A weighted? Yep, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, otherwise you'd be quite a bit off, huh? Yes. Yeah. Got a quick demo Pete's going to show us. We'll see how these decibels and A weighting work in practice. Yeah, I can do a little demonstration here of what's in the room, Scott. So here I'm actually measuring the sound pressure in the room through this thing called a Scatus XS. It's hooked up to my computer, and uh, it's showing the Pascal level here on the y-axis, frequency on the x-axis. And this uh, Scatus XS is hooked up to this uh, binaural headset. So this headset actually has a microphone in each ear, and it's being fed directly into the excess. I'm showing just one of the microphones. If I whistle, we'll see the frequency of my whistle there. So uh, that's the Pascal value. I can put a cursor on here. And what do we think the frequency of my whistle was? It's about 1,235 hertz, 0.09 Pascals. And so you might be wondering, what is that? in decibels and it's pretty easy here in the uh, sim center test lab software i can go right click on the y-axis format db and it'll plug that pascal value into the equation you showed earlier and it converts it and we get it uh, it shows it as 72.67 decibels pretty cool huh scott very cool and it did that at uh, every single frequency so uh, not only did I get a decibel value here at 1200, I got decibel values across the whole frequency range. So what is the overall uh, sound level here? Is it 72? No, it'll be 72 plus an RMS sum with all these other values, right? Right. So it's not this, the highest value that gives you your dB value. So if you read in a magazine or something like this car is 80 dB or something, what they're actually doing is they're doing a summation across the entire frequency range and they calculate a RMS sum of all those frequencies. So you can see that that is a little bit higher because like you said, yeah. Scott, it includes everything else in here. And in fact, if I start uh, moving this cursor, now I'm summing over a smaller region. Is it changing that value very much? Not at all. And that's because the largest peak is in there, just like we had uh, earlier when we had the one source at uh, uh, 113. And so if I come down here and eventually get past that source, then there's a big difference there, huh? You can see that the levels went uh, way down when it wasn't included, and they go way up and don't hardly change when the, the biggest peak is included. All right, so... Is this A-weighted or not A-weighted? Uh, I don't see any A after the DB label there on the axis, yeah. so in fact, we even say no. Yeah, and uh, we even have this, uh, you know, pretty high levels at low frequency. Yep. So if I was to A-weight it, do we expect this number to go up or down? Well, I'd we're expect gonna... to go to go down because we're going to drop a lot of those frequencies down there at the low end, right? Yeah, those will go way down, huh? Yep. Here, let's see. So we're at 74.44. I'm picking A-weighted. What? 74.62. It went up a little bit instead. Ah, uh, your whistle but is in the Texas part, isn't it? Oh, that's right. And in the A-weighting curve, uh, between 1,000 and like 5,000 hertz, that was actually an amplification of the sound. So the yeah. whistle, because it was right in the Texas region, it amplified and it amplified enough to offset any decrease due to the california effect so uh, i guess you know in regards to your previous comment scott it looks like the, the the texas is dominating the culture here or the db I, value and i i do love some barbecue food so tex-mex pretty good there you go all right hopefully that made a lot of uh, sense that was great thanks pete